Hello everybody, Strategic Sage here with my first AI War 2 run in quite some while, and by viewer request we're focusing in on the Logistician campaign type. I'm keeping with that, no extra factions added this time around, I've just got two AIs to face off against, and I wanted this to be winnable, but also quite challenging, so in trying to do that, I have a pair of difficulty 8s, moderate AI types, but also contrasting styles, in those AI types and ones that I think will really feed into some of what makes Logistician Campaign quite a challenge to play. Then we have random fleets for myself to start out. This way I'm not min-maxing my choice. I like just having the game throw whatever it has at me and we will adapt to whatever that is, good or bad. Then both AIs are using universal difficulty, which means the main difficulty selected here is eight these say five, but they will also be eight because it's on Universal. The subfleets will use the same AI difficulty that's up there for the main one. And then Warden, Anticipatory, and Intelligent Predator Hunter, the middle of the road behavior for both of those fleets. Now, the Reconquista is going to be the aggressive AI, aka the Irresistible Force name that I've put on it. Lots of Reconquest waves and powerful ones, and this should make it quite a bit more difficult for me to hang on to my fuel stations, which is going to be quite necessary. So we're leaning harder into that. Then on the turtle AI type, more defensive, of course, by nature, but they have larger CPAs. And when we throw in the dire CPA feature, that could be extra spicy there as well. So hopefully those will get us into some rather unique and cool situations. And we'll see soon if I've sort of bitten off more than I can chew here. Now I've changed a few options. Not many, but I do have hide unexplored planets on, meaning that we can only see a smaller amount of the galaxy at first in terms of where all the connections go, and then we'll reveal more of that later. Which sort of releases any idea of trying to optimize where your starting homeworld is, because you don't know what that layout is going to be. Using the classic map type, which was recently added. Also, Oddball, it's pretty much highly amusing in my opinion, Add some character to the galaxy. It'll be some really bizarre planet names. I'll just randomize this one more time. Fugazi is our starting planet, and then we only have three more. We'll see how everything else lays out when we get into it. Now, no changes in map population. Rogue legs are the same. Gravity well sizes. Not messing with any of that. But I have turned off the Tsunami CPA. Those of you who are viewers of the channel for a while will know that I'm not as big a fan of the Tsunami, which is twice as big as the standard method, or should I say the traditional method. Tsunami is now standard. But it Tsunami crashes into your planets fairly suicidally. It's all going to attack. Whereas the other one just adds to threat, will only attack if it thinks it should. So it's more intelligent. It leaves more of the ships in the guard post to fend off your attacks later. So I'm going to stick with the traditional or older method there. And then a few items that we've changed on balance as well. Metal and energy discounts for lower mark units, those are off. I've always thought it made more sense for them to just stay at the same price. You can see the tooltip there if you want to look at exactly what that does when it's on, which it is by default. Then reverse beachheading or tracking enemies through wormholes. I have that off as well. It's a cheesy tactic that players can use. I've used it before. If there's an AI fortified system, you can drag some ships out of there and sort of whittle it down a bit at a time by dragging them into a friendly planet where you have turrets. So I will not be taking advantage of that. And then non-player guard posts take less damage. The nasty picks that's already on for, that's ion cannons, mass drivers, etc. But this is only on if you have Death Wish or if you turn it on intentionally. And the reason for that is just I think guard posts are quite a bit too tissue papery in the game as it is. And it's too trivial to go around and knock them out. So this will make them more resistant and make things a little bit more interesting when we're trying to conquer planets. So a few things there that will upgrade the difficulty some over what base logistician is but other than that we are leaving it as it is and it's time to see if I'm up for this challenge or not here is our galaxy such as it is at the start I should point out that we don't need to worry about fuel yet 
I will still generally make the first two automatic captures. Our first fleet in Unruly Felicities and our turret schematic server over in third base. Which I'm not too happy about how this turned out. Because that means I've got what appears like it's going to be a bit of a choke point over here at hard one. And we're just going to be scaling this up and up by aggravating this planet. However, I don't think I have a lot of options. I'm going to need these turrets. So hard one is going to be an issue, particularly since with Argon fuel and a combat factory, it might even be a planet I would want to take, but definitely won't happen anytime soon. In any case, for our starting situation, let's look at what we have. We have the consumer fleet, which I'm generally not a big fan of. I like the Tritium Sniper Frigate, core tech, but then Metabolizing Gang Saw and Absorber, Melee I'm not a huge fan of, and then the Fusion Bomber. And our first fleet is not that great either. Raider plus Concussion Corvette, and nothing in there really is the same weapon type. Now, Cats and Trenchcoat over here actually has a fleet I'm very interested in. Tackle Drone Launcher, Bombard, Vanguard... Whether or not I take that, though, I'm going to hold off. I'm definitely going to take these two and at least get myself off to a basic start here. So, our initial tech picks. Disruptive because of pike turrets, and I'm always going to find something that goes with that. So, at least one level. Maybe more later. The melee. Let's go ahead and grab one of those as well since we have two lines in that. We'll get one engineering. Definitely want to go up in the force field and then a couple in the station keepers. And we will upgrade our command station. Even though they're more expensive, I'm going to start with one into the home command anyway. And then I wanted to take a look at the automation options. Because I always set two force fields on. I don't have the station keeper frigates on yet. I'll have them on later. I just don't want to spend the metal now. But I want to have two force fields always because two is far more than twice as good as one. As the one that's... One of them can be repairing while the other one is absorbing damage unless you're getting hit really hard. Now we'll still only start with one here. Because that only kicks in when you capture a new planet. We already had this one to begin, so... I will put up my second force field. And then I also want to defend in this direction, as we're not going to be capturing that planet, at least not immediately. I don't want to put a lot up, just something to slow them down if they should come in. So let's go ahead and do a few turrets. And a couple tachyons. Put a few tractors over there and call it a day. And we'll get... You set up with a keybind. Okay, so going to run you over this way. This is where we're going first. And you're almost done, so let's go ahead and load up. Both of you. And get into place. Let's get rolling. And we have, okay, a big situation here, but let's go ahead and take out these we guardians. Big gravity well. There's a general rule, bad thing for the first planet because it just slows you down, makes everything a little bit harder later on, but. This is not the type of campaign you play if you're looking for a fantastic start anyway, so I'm not going to cry about it. Oh, happy day. Since this is such a large planet, let's just load up 
and make our way across. I think I'm going to want to be away from this wormhole. In we go. And these unarmed guard posts don't actually get the bonus to their health, so they're going to go down pretty quick. Reason being... Let's go and switch to attack move. But they don't have weapons on them. It only applies to guard posts that have weapons. And those drones are doing a pretty good job over there. I do like decoy drones. Bearings adjusted. These are going to escape. Not going to worry about that. But everything else appears to be going down soon. Sniper frigates already proving valuable. Okay. So, let's take a look at what we're going to want to do here. I think I'm just going to, because I don't like how close this is to this wormhole. So instead of trying to blockade that, I'm just going to build on the other side of the system. We'll get it and try to narrow the vector that way. Okay. So let's yeah, try to get somewhere in the middle here. I'll find a way, sir. And yeah, this is just it's such a big system. But I'm actually going to hold off on you for a moment and let all of my building and my setting up of the asteroid mines go. Which, by the way, it's worth noting that this one has seven, I think, power plants. Yeah. And this one has five. So that's a very solid start for us, economically at least. Yeah, you probably will. So we'll definitely want to swap everything into the one fleet. No need to have them split up at this early stage. And of course, the other flagship goes back to the homeworld to boost the economy there. After that cooldown's done. Okay, now you can come back on. And we will throw up. Force field's already up, per instructions. But let's get the gravity generators up. And other assorted sundries. There's my paralysis mines. There's my tractors. It's our time to shine. It's time for the next planet. And then we'll take a look where we are in the bigger picture. You should probably sit down here. underneath the force field. And everybody else is going to take a bit to get in position, but I don't want to wait. So, okay, we have a TSS. But I think... I think I can blockade this in this case. This is only a Mark I planet, so we can chew through this pretty quick. But notice, there's a Sabo guard post, and boy, is it really having a hard time knocking that out. 
So that's just a bit of a taste of thing to come because this is only a Mark I. Of course, most of our ships are Mark I as well. But yeah, you can't just throw frigates at those and not worry about how many shots it's going to get off because the guard post will be dead soon. Yay, bombards! Knock you out. Alright. Everybody, prime your ejection seats. Everybody's being so positive. Yeah, we're going to camp out right here on top of this. But I want to look at a couple of things first. One, what are we going to get potentially from this? Blade of Turrets, really good at what they do, but not so great against things that have low albedo. Hailstorms. But I really like the idea of Subverter Turrets. Pretty sure I'm going to get that, except for I'm going to do the for all hack. We have an unfortunate developing situation relating to Argon fuel over here, because we found two more Argon stations. But they're both behind the one we already noticed there, the Mark 6 and Hard 1. We have Don't Know But It Talks, Mark 5, two times Mark 5. So if we're going to get Argon reasonably, we either plow through this, which that's really not reasonable at all, or... We go around, which arguably could be at least as hard. And I think that's about the worst luck situation for this I've ever found. We're going to have to find a way to deal with that. Now you might say, well, grab some outguard to help. We need a Xenon station, or outguard will be useless to us. And then Radon at least is better. Over here in Misrule, well, this would be quite defensible. There's nothing else in here that I want, so this probably isn't a great planet to take, but it's there as an option. The other one down here in Compost Mentis, there's a super terminal. We'd have to hack that earlier than I'd like for not very much profit, or just ignore it for this game. But we could potentially take that, get another fleet while we're there. And then we've got this major data center here. We'll want that eventually. All of that is in the future, but more short term. I do think I'm definitely going to want this fleet, so I'm going to get one tech upgrade that's going to relate to it. I want exotic as well, but I'm not allowed to get that until I actually have exotic ships. And I definitely need to get this hack done in here. So, steal for all, subverters, and give myself a little more resistance to whatever comes my way. slide you this way and watch the threat counter here as this hack transpires and especially ends that's a nice little spike so we'll probably be seeing 25 strength or so exo strike coming our way but we'll clean this up relatively easily, and I want to immediately get these subverters up. I will add them to my other planets, and when we return next time, we will head back down to Cats and Trenchcoat, try to get another fleet for us, but that's going to be a little bit more of a tougher fight to handle. Thanks for watching, and AR War 2 will continue. Let me know what you think of what's going on so far.